Apple just released iOS 26 beta 5. And honestly, this is the first one I'd widely recommend. Let me show you why and what's new, including a leak about the next Apple Watch. Real quick, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. Again, this is the fifth developer beta of iOS 26. This differs from the public beta, which comes out after the developer one. As of now, the second public beta has not been released, but expected to drop around 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, August 6th. It may already be downloadable by the time that you watch this video. So while you wait, let's talk about what's actually new here. Starting out with liquid glass. Fortunately, Apple's new UI language is sticking around. At least in my opinion, it looks pretty spot on with how it was in developer beta 4. Considering some of the waffling Apple had done in the early betas, it feels like Apple is happy with how liquid glass looks and is now focusing on optimizing it. I'm starting to see a lot of nice little UI touches because of that throughout the OS. For example, when your phone dips below 20%, it'll offer you a little toggle to enable low power mode with a cute little new animation. Similarly, when you go to put in your passcode, there is this new animation of all the number bubbles coming in. When you go to control center, there is a stretching, bouncing effect, especially as you move between the pages or cards of control center. I like this a lot. Feels liquidy? When you edit your home screen, the minus buttons are now shown in liquid glass before they're just kind of frosted. And finally, the general back gesture is kind of based on velocity. It bounces the harder you swipe back. And in use, it makes the UI feel more real, which I think is largely what Apple is going for with liquid glass. You see that new UI change across a bunch of different apps like mail, reminders, and others. What do you think of where Apple landed with liquid glass? Do you like it? Do you want more of it? Less of it? Let me know your votes down below in the comments. There are a couple other small UI changes. The dock seems to have maybe widened a bit or at least put more space around the icons compared to before. And I also got this new alert saying my phone was in adaptive power mode. This mode has been here with iOS 26, but this is the first time I got an alert right after updating actually, that let me know I was in this mode and what it was doing to my phone. We got some new splash screens this time around, truly a sign we were getting closer to release. Uh, I can't believe this literally comes out next month already. Uh, we got new splash screens in journal, music, and notes that all tout their new features. In the mail app, the select button has returned for bulk selecting emails, a common pain point in the prior betas. When you go to airdrop a file, you may notice a new icon in the share sheet. You can see the old one here on the right, though they're kind of in dark mode. Similarly, we got a new fitness icon in the fitness app. In the home app, thermostats or temperature controls have slightly different layouts. Perhaps it's an anticipation of Apple's new adaptive temperature feature? Hmm. With a last update, Apple added this reverse scroll thing to the slider in the camera app. The idea is that you're like moving the magnifier, like the glass on top of your finger, rather than sliding the list underneath of it, if that makes sense. It takes some getting used to, so if that was driving you wild, Apple did add a new toggle within settings to reverse it. In the phone app, when you go to edit, there is once more a clear all button to erase your entire call history in a single go. The biggest thing that I can tell you now though with this update is that it feels good. It's only been this afternoon as I've been digging for more features, but my phone isn't hot. It's moving pretty smoothly and all the animations look pretty great. If we look at the build numbers, you can see we actually went from 23A 5297M to 23A 5308G. The last letter represents stability. It was a big upgrade from M stability to G, and I think that's what I'm seeing here in actual use. I feel very comfortable recommending this build to the public beta testers when public beta 2 is released. I think this is much more polished than beta 1 for public and probably stable enough to try it yourself. Of course, this is still a beta, so there is still risk involved, 
don't install it on anything mission critical because there are still chances that things can go wrong. One last thing to leave you with. Mac Rumors contributor Aaron Paris spotted new code in this build. It references a new Apple Watch display size that we have not seen before. It's most closely in size to the Apple Watch Ultra, but ever so slightly bigger. We haven't really heard of any new screen size upgrades this year, but it is possible Apple decreases the bezels, allowing the screen to be a bit bigger. The current Apple Watch Ultra has a 410 by 502 resolution, while the new size is 422 by 514. Not much bigger, but a little bit. We'll all know soon enough. Be sure you stay tuned to the channel for more breaking Apple news. Let me know if you spot any other changes in these updates down below in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.